Avid Knits podcast. My name is Sarah. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry, both as Avid Knits. Um, yeah, that's that's the end of that. Um, we do have a Ravelry group. Um, I'm just going to be absolutely blunt with you. I'm terrible about checking it. Uh, so until there's a little more interest in wanting to have that uh, tool, I'm just going to skip it. Uh, all show notes and anything I talk about you'll find below here. Uh, today is Friday, uh, May, a day in May, 8th maybe? I don't know. Maybe May 8th. It is cloudy and 85 here in Houston, Texas. Yay! So, yes, that's it. That's my intro. Hi, guys. <laughs> Lockdown is a thing. <laughs> um... I don't know about you, I'm getting quite tired of lockdown. Totally understand why we're doing it. Totally on board with doing it. Houston is starting to reopen. Texas has decided it's going to reopen. We will not be going anywhere. Um, this is just a frustration vent. This has nothing to do with, I shall no longer be on quarantine. No, no, it's fine. Um, I'm going to take for granted that the people who uh, study disease for a living and have gone to school for 12 more years than I have probably know what they're talking about. And until the all clear is blown, we will continue to shelter in place as much as possible. Doesn't mean I can't complain about it every now and then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's been rough, but it's okay. Um, I guess it hasn't been rough. It's been fine. Today has been rough. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's my spiel. It's going to be kind of a weird episode, you guys. Like, I need to record. Um, I want to record. I don't have anything to say. My hair is really long. I can do, I can braid it now. I'm not very good at it, but I, I can do it. I guess I haven't been able to braid my hair since... Oh, 08, maybe? I got out of the military in 08, and my hair was long enough for a low ponytail then. Well, a little more than a low ponytail. I was able to put it in a bun for my uniform. But it wasn't long, long. It couldn't have been any. Yeah, and then I cut it short, and then I bobbed it. And I think it has touched my shoulders one other time. That was when I first met my husband, and we were riding motorcycles, and I kept it long so that I could ponytail it before I put my helmet on, because my helmet was... We were a sports bike. I'll picture here. Um, so the helmet is very tight fitting and I kept getting hair in my face and it drove me freaking nuts. <laughs> so since I couldn't keep pins in my hair without pulling, pulling them out when I put on the helmet, I finally just let my hair grow long enough to be able to ponytail it at the base of my neck. But without fail, I would shove the ponytail holder out and then have to put that on my wrist or somewhere on the bike so that I wouldn't lose it. <laughs> Being a female is hard. <laughs> Being anybody with long hair is hard, I guess. Being anybody is hard. What am I talking about? Hi, again. What's up? Um, so, I, I have no finished objects. I don't think. I feel like there's something that I finished or put a lot of work into specifically to tell you guys about because I was like right there and I was getting really tired of coming back week after week and saying, I know I said I'd be farther, but I'm not. I can't think of what that was. So I'm just going to start with whips and we're going to go from there. Um, my, I guess the closest thing to a finished object I would have is the green beast sweater. Um, this is how much I cut off of the bottom of that sweater. So I took off five inches. Um, and then I used a fresh skein of yarn so it wouldn't be crimpy. I had leftovers from when I knit the sweater. So I used that to re-knit two inches of ribbing back on. So I only reduced the sweater length by three inches. Uh, and I turned that in on Tuesday. So um, my girlfriend, Melody, who is the one who does jewelry and she helped me with putting these things on the chain. Uh, she has never been to the modern skein in Montgomery. Um, just if, I mean, understandably so. She lives 30 minutes south of me, maybe, and the modern skein is like 40 minutes north of me. Um, it's not even that it's super far, necessarily. It's just kind of the way that Houston is set up. So we have 45 goes down the middle, and then there's the inner loop, then 
Beltway 8, which is like the outer loop, I guess. Um, and then there's 99. So I live off of 290 and 99 way out here. My girlfriend lives, so 45 and 10, and she lives down here. And then the yarn store is directly north of me, but there's really no, there's no highway to get there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. In Texas, we're very reliant on highways. Things are quite spread out. So as far as like the crow flies or number wise, she's not super far from me, but I have to take a farm to market road to get to her, which is wonderful because this is beautiful back roads drive. Um, but yeah, you know, speed limit's like 40 miles an hour instead of like, I don't know, 75. <laughs> it takes a little bit. Anyway, sorry. So Melody met up with me at my house on Tuesday morning and we uh, popped in the car and headed out to the Modern Skein and got to visit with Sharon for a little bit. Um, I didn't buy anything because I don't need anything, but I did pick up another commission and I, yeah, I'll talk about that now, I guess. All right, I picked up a new commission, so I'm super excited. And it is going to be the Vintage 83 Crop Top by Andrea Mowry. And I will be knitting it in, I don't know, I don't know what this is, um, Estate Fingering, which is what I knit the stone crop out of, so I'm very familiar with the base. The colorway is Castle Rock, so it's this really beautiful light gray, almost silver color. And then the Vintage 83 has a textured stitch all over, so I'm really excited about that. And then it has three strips of brioche in mohair. And so those are going to be, I don't know what colorway to use. I didn't look first, so I'm semi-unprepared. Sorry, guys. It's going to be these three. And Sharon told me that I could pick the order, so this is the order that I'm picking. I think she watches this. So Sharon, if you see this and you don't like this order, shoot me a message, let me know. Um, I'll shoot you a text on Instagram so that you can see it because relying on you to see it over a podcast when you have a full-time job is kind of rude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know anything about Josh's uh, mohair, actually. Josh is the dyer behind Red Stag Fiber. I'm so sorry. That is also red stag fiber. Um, I don't mention, I forgot to mention that because when I do commissions for the modern skein, I am specifically there to work up uh, red stag fiber samples. So um, Josh is her husband. He is the dyer behind red stag fibers. This is his logo. It is a wonderful yarn. His beautiful bases. His colors are really great. This is... Castle Siri. So this is Siri Alpaca. So it's 74% alpaca, 26% silk. So it's not mohair. It's Suri. Sorry. I got that wrong about the Andrew Maurer pattern. This is Isle of Harris. I knit a shawl for her out of Isle of Harris on a DK maybe or a worsted before I realized how much I hate shawl knitting and asked if I could not do that again. <laughs> She's been really good with me about that. Um, this one is Gilded, and this one is, I think I would know where the labels are, Kelvin Grove, and it's this beautiful dusky rose peachy kind of pink color, and so, yeah. So that's my new commission. It's living in this bag that was gifted to me by my friend Julie. It is a hook and gauge project bag, and so it's measuring tape. Unfortunately, it's not accurate measuring tape, because how great would that be? Just be able to hold up your project a little bit. Um, and I have just started it. So I've done the provisional, and I'm working on the ribbing. There's three inches of ribbing, and then I get into the fun stuff. So not much to report on that. Sorry, I had LASIK a few years ago, and um, I got every now and then I, I switched eyeliners I'm an idiot and sometimes I get a little get a little weepy I'm just a little sensitive chai tea we went to New York City in a month before lockdown <laughs> February maybe um early March I don't remember anyway we went to New York City and we revisited a place that we went to we went to New York City in October for our anniversary, and then we went again in March because we found really cheap tickets and we had some time off and we could do that. So we did it. 
and there is a place in New York City if you are from there or go there that I highly recommend. It is in Hell's Kitchen. It is called The Rustic Table and it is so good. Just so good. It's like a Mediterranean place, I think, I guess is how they would um, describe it. Uh, anyway, but they have a chai latte and they were really kind and told me where they get their chai and it is the Oregon chai that you can find in the coffee tea section of your local grocery store. Uh, mostly it comes in a concentrate, but um, I, so I bought some because it was like the best chai I've ever had, but then I stopped to really think about it and realized that um, I don't think I've had a plain chai in 15 years. <laughs> I always put espresso in mine. So, you know, coffee makes everything better. So it is very good, um, but it definitely needs the espresso. I'm not a huge sweet chai fan, and it is not overly sweet by any stretch. It is definitely not, um, sorry guys, it is definitely not Starbucks sweet, but it could use the espresso. So I'll get through it, but it could use the espresso. It's just too hot. It's too hot for coffee right now, you guys. It's almost 90 degrees for some stupid, unapparent reason. All right. Let's see. Works in progress. I have my ripple crop top. This is Life in the Long Grass on her sock base uh, in the colorway Cantaloupe. Tis very pretty. I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to wear it on the podcast. I'm hoping I'll be able to wear it next time you see me. So I have four inches, three inches left of the back. And then I think it has little cap sleeves or something. So that's it. That's my, that's my ripple crop top and it's almost done. I'm very excited about it. We are going to San Marcos today, which is about a two and a half hour drive from us. My husband ordered a new mountain bike and it is in, so we're going to go pick that up. And I am going to take this and hopefully finish the back. Cause I'm very tired of it. <laughs> it's a wonderful pattern. I highly recommend it, but three by three rib, forever is I'm, I'm just done that's what it comes down to I'm done and I want to work on something else so um fat squirrel fibers bag magpies who are all over my yard right now goodness it's a good thing they're not overly annoying like I don't know ours are relatively quiet I know some people have trouble with theirs I know sometimes magpies can tend to be a little bit um territorial maybe uh, we have a lot of blackbirds I know we've talked about this before we're not going to go into it again. Um, the reason I don't have a ton of knitting, not the reason, but I mean something else that we've been doing. We uh, laid mulch last weekend and I made strawberry jelly. I made 50 jars of strawberry jelly. <laughs> so I forgot how much I normally do. So typically I do 10 pounds of strawberries and it yields me 30 jars 25 jars something like that um my husband I've never met anybody who eats jelly the way my husband does like that's insanity uh I think last year I gave out eight jars maybe eight jars and we kept 15 or something I I don't remember. Anyway, it's gone. It's been gone. We bought a jar of Smucker's jelly just because it was gone and my husband ate toast with it one time and said that he wasn't going to eat it anymore. So if I wanted it, it was fair game. Um, so this year I got 20 pounds of fruit because I'm silly and couldn't remember that I got 10. So I doubled it, uh, which means I'll have more to give out this time. But it also means that I have jelly up to my, air, my ears and I just don't know what to do with all of it. So um anyway that was a lot of fun but it was a very long weekend a lot of standing around uh and then we did mulch it was saturday and we did mulch in the front yard on sunday um and we have quite a large area to mulch i tweaked something in my hip for those of you who don't know i broke a hip when i was 21 and um yeah 21 and no 20 whatever you don't care my point is 15 years ago almost I broke a hip and um, I have a little tiny bit of residual nerve damage doesn't usually bother me it's not a big deal but I did something and so my hip is fine but the nerve that travels from your hip is like not happy with me and so my lower back is really bugging me because I have three screws on my right side my feet are just ever so slightly off which means that my gait when I walk leans one way uh, a little more than the other. Not a big deal. It's fine, usually. 
but when it's not fine, <laughs> you feel all of it. So like basically my whole right side kind of cramped up. I have Siri in my mouth. My whole my right side kind of cramped up and I had leg issues. And it's been a really long week of sitting on a heating pad and being bored out of my mind. But, but, silver lining. So you know that gray Spelia sweater that I was making for my girlfriend in Portland? Okay. So, for any new viewers, hi, by the way, there are a lot of you. It's really nice to see you. Thank you for coming over. I'm assuming you're here because of Needles at the Ready, because Ray and Kevin were so super sweet to give me a shout out. Um, and yeah, so hi, welcome to it. Uh, I'd like to tell you that this is not a normal podcast, but it kind of is. It kind of is. Maybe less, you know. You know, maybe less of that, but this is about right. And there's definitely not normally this much eye watering. Good grief. Stelia sweater, okay? This is also knit in red stag fiber because who am I? Um, and this is also estate fingering, and this is called cobblestone. It's called cobblestone. Um, a lot of you will remember that I did finish the front and back and I did join it. But when I put it on, my yoke depth is, they only call for like six inches. Now, if you could measure from here to here, I would swear it's an eight easily. And this is supposed to fit me with four inches of positive ease. Now, the girlfriend I'm knitting it for is a little bit smaller than I am, but she's going to want the extra ease. So I, well, that's fine. So I ended up basically ignoring the pattern and I extended it. So instead of doing six inches for the armholes, I did nine because the six inch armholes was like super snug under my armpit. And that was not the type of thing I was going for. So I have a 16 inch body. I hit my armholes. My front and my back are nine inches and I bound it off. I did my little, I did my I cord bind off. It turned out really pretty. So the neckline is nice. And then I picked up a sleeve. Now, it says to pick up 72 stitches. I picked up 84 or 86 because I had more stitches and I did not bother going down to 74 at all. I decreased to get rid of my holes on the bottom underneath my arm, which is my normal standard thing. And then I used lots of little light bulb stitch markers to make sure all my decreases were there. I got to the end. I did not decrease. I just knit straight and then I put on a little on a cuff. And I used a sewn tubular bind off, so it's super stretchy. It's actually not as stretchy as it probably could be because I was a little bit tight last night because I was just ready to be done. But it fits fine. You can't feel it. So one sleeve. Yay, one sleeve. Finally. And if I'm honest, I probably knit this. If I had knit like it was my J-O-B and knit for eight hours, I would have done this in a day. So it wasn't bad at all. It's only 15. It's like 15 inches or 16 inches and then a cuff. So I have this one to do and I really want to take my ripple crop top to San Marcos because I really want that off the needles but I'm kind of tempted because I could be halfway through a sleeve if I just took this sleeve. you know like if I get this done I can mail it off and then the ripple crop top is for me and so nobody's waiting on that but me and Texas has summer for I don't know a year so I can wear that anytime right Trying to be responsible. I'm not very good at it at all. So that's that. Yay. But I tried it on. It fits me nice. It's good stuff. Uh, when I block it, I'm going to be a little bit aggressive on the body and try to uh, so it, so that it'll lengthen just a tiny bit. And that way it'll be a super flowy, drapey kind of thing. Uh, that is living in my Knitted Niceties Women of STEM bag. Her name is Mariah. She will be linked down below. We talk about her a lot. And then other than that, I have knit two rows on another sweater. And that was this morning. And that's, that's not it. That's not the sweater. <laughs> I knit two rows on my Bronwyn which basically means that I have a cable. Um, not a cable chart, not a cable pattern, literally a cable. 
I don't even know if you can see that. Probably not. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's I knit two rows on that this morning with my coffee and Chevy Rail. I watched the Chevy Rail podcast. If you don't watch Chevy Rail, I really recommend it. She's super high energy. And um, she's really, her last episode was the first one I've ever seen. Needles at the Ready mentioned her and um, I figured I'd run over and check her out and see what she had to say. And um, I it, watched my first episode Tuesday night, Wednesday night with my husband. We were sitting here in my yarn room and um, I was watching podcasts and he was watching Ozark on his phone because I don't want to watch it because it's... No, it's not my thing. He loves it, though. So if you're into, I don't know, drama, it's a Netflix drama about a guy who gets sucked into the cartel on accident as a money launderer. And it's basically like three seasons of everybody around him doing all the stupid things to get him killed and him just trying to stay alive. <laughs> That's what I get out of it. But it has Jason Bateman in it. And I love Jason Bateman, so I'm really sad that I'm not interested in it. Uh, but it's really good. If you're, um, I'm trying to think of what I could compare it to. I don't even know. I don't even know what to compare it to. Um, so yeah, check it out. My husband loves it. I know lots of people that think it's really great. It's just not something that I'm in the mood for right now, at least. Um, anyway, so he was watching that and I was watching Chevy Rail on a podcast and we were, you know, having a cocktail and just hanging out or whatever. And I like literally snorted scotch out my nose and that was a terrible experience. Um, Chevy Rail uh, often has a beer or a drink or something on her podcast, like she podcasts in the afternoon and that's her social hour. She sits and has a drink with you, you know? And, um, her husband, she mixed a cocktail on the podcast to show you what she was making and she used Tito's vodka and they have one of the really big jugs that has the handle on it. <laughs> and, uh, her husband came and interrupted her in the middle of the podcast to take the vodka from her. <laughs> It just, their, their whole interaction about it. And then like, he poured a little bit of extra vodka in her drink and she was like, okay, that's good. And he just like, he was like, okay. And then tipped it over farther. <laughs> She's like trying to take it away from him, but she doesn't want to smell vodka on the floor. Anyway, I laughed really hard and, um, she's just funny. She's funny. Um, some of her humor is a little irreverent. So if you're, uh, not, that's not your bag or if swearing is not your bag, maybe not Chevy. Um, but if you're into that, she's hysterical and, uh, I've had a really great time, uh, watching back episodes for her and seeing her come into her own. She's been a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that's, I got some acquisitions to share with you. I don't normally do an acquisition section just because I trade usually for my commissions. Either I'm paid in money and then I usually spend that on yarn or I uh, am paid in yarn and I don't like to... I don't know. Acquisition sections just aren't my favorite, but I'm really low on content. So I figured that I would do it. And you guys can tell me if you don't appreciate it or if that's something that you just really don't care to see, let me know down in the bottom and I won't do it. Or tell me if you really like it. I don't know what the, I don't know. Um, it. I think it gets to me based off of, I'm really sorry about the eyes thing, guys. Uh, I think it gets to me based on how often it happens. So for instance, if you have a dedicated section of acquisitions and there's a few things, then it's like, that's fine. Now, one of my favorite podcasts has always been the Grocery Girls. If you don't like the Grocery Girls, um, then there just must be something about the way that they do their podcasts that you don't super appreciate because them as people are phenomenal. I've met them in person. They're super, super sweet. They are exactly what you think that they're going to be. And that is wonderful. That face value is so nice. But the one thing that really gets me about Jody and Tracy is that they're, they're, they're so popular that they're always getting stuff. And so when they do their podcast, sometimes they end up being two and a half hours. And the majority of it is just them showing you stuff that they've received or found or going to give away or bought. And that's fine. That's fine. But it's not always something I'm in the mood to watch. So that all being said, with this giant preface and tangent that you didn't need to hear, I'm going to share a couple of things I've gotten with you. So the first two things that I want to share are my install, my installment, my final installment for the Celtic Myths Club from Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Actually, hold that thought. Okay, so I have 
I knit a sample for Julie of Sweet Sparrow Yarns last year. I knit the Spectre and it was gorgeous. And when she asked, when we were talking about payment, I had asked, um, hey, instead of payment, um, you have a Celtic Myths Club. I would be really interested in having that instead. And so she was all about that and said, of course, absolutely. And so she was kind enough to gift me that club. I think it was four months, maybe five, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five, six, I don't know. Her clubs are amazing, amazing. Please, please check them out whenever they're available. Um, I don't remember what order they came in. I don't have all the information for all of them. I can't pronounce a couple of them, <laughs> so just bear with me, okay? So I'm gonna um, just run through the colors real quick. Um, and I'll try to remember some of the stories. And then what I can't remember or whatever, like I'll try to supplement on the bottom of the screen so you can see. Um, so this is the colorway Maybon, and it is a pagan holiday for spring. It's uh, the, I wanna say Maybon is the same as like Beltane or the Celtic May Day. If I'm wrong, I will correct that on the screen, but I know that this colorway is Mavon and it's this beautiful uh, goldy color. She has the most gorgeous yellows. I'm not a huge yellow fan, but Julie could make up 17 different yellow colorways and I would probably want them all. <laughs> I can't wear yellow. It um, really washes me out. It makes me look like I'm dying, so that's not great. This one is called... I believe it's a Cluricon, and if I remember correctly, it's kind of like a Leprechaun. It's like a, a fae, um, but it is attracted to alcohol. So these are the colors of like red wine and mead and beer uh, and, you know, whiskeys, the spirits that you would find in uh, Ireland and Scotland. And every time that she sends you um, a colorway, she sends you a cute little sorry, a cute little stitch marker. This one I believe is a tiger's eye. Yeah, it's a tiger's eye. So it's just a little globe. This one is Samhain, which is the pagan holiday that has become Halloween. So it's in a fall festival. It's on, this one's on her sparkle base. This one's on her singles base. And this is Bridget's Mantle. Uh, St. Bridget is uh, some of the older, some of the old timey Celtic beliefs were that St. Bridget's Day is on this date. And you're supposed to put a cloth out for St. Bridget to bless as she passes by. And then that is supposed to help keep you healthy and um, keep, your, keep you safe. So this is the really, this is a uh, very, very pretty green, like some really uh, lovely gold and maroon speckles. And my little stitch marker is, stop it, a bee with a honeycomb. I hope you can see that. I have my camera facing the other way today, so I can't tell what you can see. <laughs> um, this one is Kilstiffen. And I don't remember anything about this colorway. I'm not going to lie to you. So I will see what I can find and I will put it on the screen. But it's this beautiful brown gold copper color with um, a little bit of greens in it. It's almost like a patina color. And then this one I have, I still have the card for. So this is one that I really wanted to show you. Oh, um, sorry. That one has a stitch marker as well. It is a little key. Okay, this one is the colorway Selkie. It's on her gosling base. Most of these are on gosling, which is her merino cashmere nylon. Um, so it is this beautiful bluish gray with purples and browns and greens running through it. Now, a Selkie, for those of you who don't know, a Selkie is a Celtic sea sprite fairy almost they uh seals they turn into they believe that some seals are magic uh or that's the story anyway so here is the stitch marker that i received with it these beautiful little beads and here we go here's her information card that comes with every order every one of these had a story okay all of them had a story and these were phenomenal and i don't know what happened to these when i cleaned out my yarn room and i'm really tempted just to ask her if she still has these and can email them to me <laughs> so it says, 
Many of us grew up with stories of mermaids, but children in Scotland often grow up hearing stories of selkies, magical creatures who can transform from a seal to a human by shedding their seal skin. Beautiful women, and according to some, very handsome men, would emerge from the forms of seals, leaving their seal bodies on the mossy rocks and walking onto the shore. The selkie, sometimes called a seal maiden or a seal wife, was free to return to the sea as long as she could get back into her seal skin. However, if the skin was stolen and hidden, often by men who longed to marry these beautiful creatures, she was stuck in human form until she could get it back, and would spend her days plaintively watching the sea, dreaming of her true home. In many Selkie stories, her children with her human husband would unknowingly return her seal skin, and she would vanish back into the sea, only seen again by her children as a seal who seemed unusually familiar to them. She says that she chose to the selkies with the deep cool gray of the selkies seal skins speckled with the mossy green of the rocks on which they spend their time ashore the brown of the earth on which they walked as human women and a mysterious feminine deep violet right here tinged with melancholy the mossy agate which is this thing here in addition to, res to resembling the jetties and cliffs frequented by seals is a stone of balance, helping us to continue to be our true selves despite external strife, which selkies would certainly need as they exist between the world of the sea and the world of the land. So if any of you have ever watched like Outlander or um, have read the Irish Country Doctor series or anything like that, um, a lot of these holidays and traditions and myths are discussed in those stories. Uh, Irish Country Doctor is a very good series for anybody looking for kind of a fluffy. It's about um, a rural general practitioner or general doctor who lives in a small town in Ireland in the 60s and it is just this really heartwarming, they're just these really heartwarming books about life and the village life and the people that they encounter. There's no violence, there's no, there's no nothing um, in them. So, uh, they're really great light reads. Uh, they have a lot of discussion about, like, the culture and how that, you know, applies. Like, uh, the joining of modern medicine versus, like, the cultural superstitions and stereotypes and stuff. And it's just a really sweet series. I highly recommend it. It's by Patrick Taylor, who is himself an Irish doctor. So, let me put these away. Okay, I have two other acquisitions to share with you. And one of them is also a club colorway. But I really, really loved it, and I thought that you guys would appreciate it. Um, this is from Lamb Strings Yarn, and the colorway is called The Plague Doctor. And so the inspiration of it is, of course, the doctors from the plague era, from the, the 13 and 1400s, that would wear the bird mask things to try to protect themselves from plague patients. And this is part of her Gothic Colorways uh, monthly club. And I was fortunate enough to get a skein of this. And I have to also um, admit to you that I emailed her immediately to tell her how wonderful this colorway was because I did not know the inspiration for it and how great it was when I opened it. And she told me that um, she will uh, often accept custom orders. So, like if I wanted a sweaters quantity of this, I could ask for it. So I don't know what that means as far as somebody who did not originally purchase the club. But um, all of her colorways are super... Um, are very deep, very uh, layered, super, super um, detailed isn't the right word, you know? Like, they're just absolutely, they're very intricate, and they're beautiful, beautiful colors. So, yeah, this is on her Tra La La Sock, which is a 7525 four-ply. So I'm super, super excited about knitting with that. And my last acquisition is Nomadic Yarns because I love nomadic yarns and I've been really enjoying my stripey socks. And so I kind of wanted a new color. Um, this is defense against the dark arts. And so you should see this on the needles pretty shortly. I'll probably cast that on. Normally I would cast this on today on the way to San Marcos. I have sweaters that I'm trying to get off the needles. Responsibility is not my forte. So there's a chance you might do this. No lies. Plus, if I were to work on this, I could probably get, like, two-thirds of the way through a sock in the three and four hours or something that it'll take us to do this drive back and forth. Because we'll be home by eight. 
sun doesn't go down until eight. I could probably have most of the sock done. Because I knit, I knit Rose City Rollers and knit shorties. That's really tempting. <laughs> Might do that. I'm ridiculous. You can't take me anywhere. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's what I've got. Um, other than watching Chevy Rail podcasts, I haven't really been doing anything, I guess. I'm rereading a book that I read like 16 times before just because it's one of those things that I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying the comfort of something familiar. That book, for those of you who care, um, is called, well, it's a series. So I'll tell you the first book in the series and you can find out the rest of it if you want to. The first book in the series is called Oath Taker. It is the Kingdom of Runes Saga by Audrey Gray. Um, and I'm enjoying it. I think it, I don't know if it qualifies as YA or not, but it's fantasy. Um, I think over the whole series, it's supposed to be an enemies to lovers thing, but the romance isn't really touched upon much until like book three. Uh, the end of book three. Mainly it's just this girl trying to get by. I like it because she's really headstrong and so there's a really great female protagonist, but she, who does stupid things in the beginning because she doesn't know any better, but she learns. So, so often you find, um, a girlfriend of mine and a girlfriend of mine and I were talking about it, like the Stephanie Plum series, like the one for the money, two for the show, you know, whatever it is. Uh, it is, she's on like book 28 and this chick is still making the same mistake she was making in book one. And it's uh, infuriating. You know, I think I got to book 11 before I was like, okay, <laughs> we're not getting any better. <laughs> Like, it just throws a love triangle in there. And no offense to you if you enjoy the books. Like, they're very fluffy. They're they're super fun. But the one thing I do like about this book is that although she might make some really headstrong, silly uh, mistakes in the beginning, by, like, book two or three, she's pretty much got it figured out. Or she's getting better at it, rather. Um, so, book four is, was supposed to be released in May. And then I looked back on the website, and now it's being released in November. So, that's aggravating. And then uh, book five, I guess, has a release date, but I don't know when that's going to be next year or sometime, I guess. So that's frustrating as crap because I can read, I can read a normal book in under four hours. So I need to stop throwing all this time at everything. I don't space things out. I'm kind of an all or nothing kind of person. <laughs> uh all right, real quick, um, new podcasts. I need new podcasts. Does anybody have anything, anybody that they super, super love? Um, I find that, I'm sure that part of it's quarantine, but a lot of the podcasts that I've been trying to watch that are new, people aren't podcasting. And like I said, I'm positive that's because of quarantine and lockdown. Um, but yeah, I, I'm running out. We have so much extra time, you know, and my normal podcasters are you know, still working or they are putting up content, but because I have more time, I'm getting through it faster, I guess. So, uh, Chevy Rel is new to me. I really like her. Needles at the Ready is relatively new to me. I really enjoy them. Uh, Scott and not Scott. I'm so sorry. So sorry, Kevin. So sorry, Ray. You guys are, you know, you know better. Um, Kevin and Ray are Needles at the Ready. Scott and John are Sorry, guys. Sweet tea, no shade. Sweet tea, no shade. Um, and I found out about them through each other. So unfortunately, I tend to get them mixed up. Um, apparently, there's another male um, podcast called Fiber Hustle. And I haven't checked them out yet. So I, I'm interested in that. Um, yeah, super great. I guess that's really the only, those are the only three that I've really uh, found lately. So if you have any suggestions, I'd be really glad to hear them. Um, or if you have come here from another podcast because somebody told you about me or something, uh, please let me know because I might not know that. And I would really like to uh, be able to reach out to them or vice versa so that we can help build our community a little bit since we all have extra time to be part of the community, which is really cool. But, you know, you know. I'm really glad that there's all this extra time for us to build ourselves up as a community, but it is frustrating that this is uh, less than ideal circumstances for it to be happening in. So that's enough of my nonsense and my blabber because I really need to try to get some of this edited before we leave and we're going to be leaving very shortly. 
So y'all have a great day and a good weekend and all of that fun stuff until I see you again. And we will see how many irresponsible things I have done in your app.